Hello everyone and welcome to Clarence Booze. My name's Nick and this is my daily ramble. How are you all feeling today, eh? Still feeling smug? I think you should be. I've got bragging rights for quite a while over Arsenal, at least until, what is it, Boxing Day? We've got to play them next time? It's brilliant, wasn't it? I hope you've all been giving them loads of stick over WhatsApp. All your friends, all your... All your family that are gooners, I hope you've been giving them both barrels, because so you should as well. As always, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe, because it does help us. Fast approaching 10k, so it every every sub helps. And don't forget, drop a like on the video. Right. Well, before I get into talking about what I'm going to talk about today, a couple of caveats, all right? This isn't breaking news, okay? This is an unconfirmed story. I can't confirm it, basically, um, because of the nature of the source, um, also, I'm going to caveat it as well by saying a lot of people, especially people that are incredibly pro Moyes, are going to say, oh, look, Nick's at it again. He's just trying to find a way to discredit Moyes and blah, 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 blah. Take it away from him. No, I'm not. This is this would be me crediting Moyes in my mind because it would mean that he's done something that I didn't think he was capable of doing, and that's taking advice, okay? Right, so let me tell you how this all unfolded. There's a guy that I speak to, who's um, who's connected with a certain member or members of the board, and it's not the Sullivan and Brady side. Um, and uh, I got a phone call before the game saying uh, there's been a there's been a few tweaks, there's been a few changes um, at West Ham in the last little while. We said don't be surprised that when the lineup is released, that you will see a very strong attacking lineup. With players played in their obvious positions, he said. Um, he said, "Don't be surprised to see that." So I, I thought, okay, can you expand on that? Uh, and he went right. He said, "Well, as you can imagine, he said over the past, not he said not just because of the last bad week, he said, but the the issue with Sullivan being able to manage Moyes, especially since Starting has come in, it's be, it's become more and more tetchy. Um, and the, this last week, you know, culminating with the Everton defeat." the board have um, kind of been a little bit fractured over David Moyes and they've told David Sullivan to do something with Moyes. Um, and he does. He didn't confirm this, but he said, I'm, I'm assuming what they've done is they've had a vote over Stuyton's role at the club uh, and basically making him realise the job that he was brought in to do, which is be a director of football and basically become Moyes' boss to see if uh, Stuyton can manage Moyes and if he can't manage him, to get rid of him. And... That's basically what has happened, according to this guy. Um, first of all, Johnny Heitinger is a guy that, although we know, because I thought this was a David Moyes pick because he's a player that's played with David Moyes before, um, Johnny Heitinger was identified by Tim Steiton when he went to um, scout, sign, caduce and Alvarez at Ajax. He was working uh, on a coaching staff at Ajax at the time. Really liked him, saw his body of work, was really impressed and offered him to David Moyes and said, Moyes, could you work with this guy? Moyes said, yes, I've worked with him before. He was my defender. That's how Heitinger came in. Um, now, the story is that Stuyton, first port of call was to talk to Heitinger and say, look, this isn't working at the moment. If this was your team, what would you do? You've seen it for a little while now. Where would you play these pieces? How how should we play? Um, at the end of the conversation, apparently Stuyton was in agreement. He was like, we're singing from the same hymn sheet. This is kind of what I'm seeing as well. Then apparently Stuyton takes Moyes in hand. Moyes is now aware of the of the structure change. And he said, you've got an expert in John Heitinger who's been brought in, who's very familiar with some key players that we've just bought in the summer. Um, he's experienced with playing progressive football. I suggest that you lean on his expertise to assist you with selecting the team and setting the tactics for the game. He said, I, I think that would be good for you. He said, because basically... If we don't start seeing changes on the pitch and quickly, there's going to be a change in the dugout. That was the phrase. We either see changes on the pitch or there will be a change in the dugout. Now, look, like I say, I don't know whether this is 100% true, but we've got to be honest. That was not a very David Moyes performance yesterday. It wasn't a David Moyes team selection. The pieces were all in the right places. Paquetta had, moved, had been moved back central again. Antonio was out. You know, we had a strong central midfield with Alvarez and Suchek, just two in the middle, two central midfielders. Um, you had the, the all Tim's players were playing, you know, Dinos, uh, Mavropanos um, and Caduce. Uh, Dinos and Mavropanos are the same player. Um, yeah, so all, all the all the new players were playing 
Um, apart from James Will Prowse, who we knew was um, a David Moyes or a David Sullivan signing, one of the two. It weren't a Tim, weren't a Tim signing anyway. They 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 basically changed it around. It just looked like a really good solid team when you looked at it on paper, um, and it just worked beautifully, you know. So, and the way that we played. We played with kind of a bit of a cautious style, I suppose you could say. You could say it was a, a little bit moisy in the sense that we was blocking in the first half, but we weren't blocking in the same way. We was pressing. We were pressing with intensity everywhere. Fullbacks, midfielders, defenders, attackers, Jared Bowen and Caduce were closing Ramsdale down and were stopping them from playing out from the back in the first half. We were good. We were, we were looking really effective on the counter-attack. And then in, in the second half, we did what we haven't done all season. We came out on fire and we went after Arsenal and we never once in that half changed our identity and started to regress because we had a comfortable lead. We just kept going. We just kept pushing. So it does all add up. It does add up. However, it could be nonsense. Of course, it could be. It could not be true. I think we will see whether or not it is true in the coming games in the Premier League. Because if David Moyes reverts to type, then that renders this story null and void and, and, and useless. However, if we start to see a sustained period of change, then there is obviously something in it. Now, look, I think that this can only be good for David Moyes if it's true. Because if you think back to David Moyes' most, his best period when he first came in, it, relatively, I know he won us a cup last year, but that was when he had, you know, um, Irvine. He had, he had, he had Irvine to sort of um, uh, to consult with. You know, that that was kind of, and he was. It was somebody that he respected, somebody he listened to. And every top manager has got a good number two. Well, since then, David Moyes has gone through fucking first team assistant after first team assistant. He doesn't listen to anyone. He wants to do it all himself. He's a, he's a walking ego. We know that. We know that about David Moyes. Well, if David Moyes is kind of being sh is is being forced to do what most other managers do, and that's take advice and take counsel from your number two. Two heads are always better than one. It can only be good for Moyes. It could. If we could get the best from Moyes and the best from Heitinger with the leadership and zero tolerance from Tim Starton hanging over the top of him, if Starton has got the ability to give him the bullet, that's going to keep Moyes on his toes. That can only be good for everyone concerned, including West Ham fans. And like I say, Probably including Moyes, because he he probably could, if you stop being so stubborn, he could probably exist in that sort of environment. And he would reap all the benefits, all the fans, he'd get all the plaudits for it as well. Every time we had a good performance, it'd be David Moyes has done this, David Moyes has done that. So why wouldn't he try? Because at the end of the day, the way things um, are going in the league, if you look at the pattern for the last two years, I know we're a decent cup team. We're doing well. We've done brilliantly yesterday. It was amazing. But... The league is the bread and butter. That's where the money is. That's where the real money is. And when you're investing and splurging as much money into the club on personnel like the Bull are, we're going to be expecting a financial return as well when the financial return comes from the Premier League positions. We would have probably got more last season from finishing sixth than finishing 14th from winning the uh, Conference League. For us, it's great. But for the club, they, look, they, they, they care about money. So... Premier League is bread and butter. That is David Moyes' main mandate. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens against Brentford and beyond as well over the next few weeks. Um, because like I say, I personally do think there's something in this. I personally believe it. I do. Um, it's very believable. I just don't think that... Um, I think there was some obstinance going on that David Sullivan was probably struggling to manage between Stuyton and David Moyes. And it just seems very logical to break it and just go, look, Dave... Tim, Tim, you're the boss. Dave, you're underneath. Dave, if you can't work with Tim, Tim, get rid of him, get someone else in. That's forcing everyone to basically play their part and do the job. That's the only way it can work. The way we've been doing it, which is having this kind of director of football that hasn't really got any power over a, a very, very stubborn manager, was never gonna was never gonna kind of end well. And I think you can tell a lot as well from the post-match interview, if you watch it yesterday, we're just beating Arsenal, a London rival, 3-1 at home. A magnificent performance. David Moyes appeared very downbeat in that in that post-match interview. He did. You know, he, he looked fed up. He looked fed up in the post-match interview. He just beat Arsenal 3-1. Now, that's either... I don't know what that could be, but it probably could be a little bit that he's taken advice from someone else and it's worked. So it could be that. 
or he could have just been, it could have been his time of the month. I don't know. Because if it was all him, he would have been smiling from ear to ear. He'd have been absolutely beaming. This is great. Look at what I've done. This was this was a masterclass, you know? That wasn't the impression that you got if you watched that post-match interview back. And you can see it. Just Google it on YouTube. It is there. He's, you know, he's do, doing his usual defiant thing, you know, gaslighting, saying we only had a bad week and all that sort of thing. But he's, it's just his demeanour. We've just beat Arsenal 3-1. You know, why wouldn't you be a little bit more, a little bit more chipper? But it's it's like I say, this is this is kind of this is in David Moyes' hands. If this story is true and it's and it's it turns out to be true, um, and I do hope it is, I do hope it is because I think it's best for all concerned, including Moyes. Because if Moyes keeps on going down this path, he's going to get sacked. He's going to get sacked if he's being forced by by Tim to consult with Heitinger, who is a very very good tactician and, and first team coach. It can only benefit Moyes and benefit us in turn. So let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know what your thoughts are anyway. Like I say, this ain't breaking news. I'm not breaking news. I'm telling you a story that I was given from quite a good source, but it is unverified. And I said earlier on in the video that I've sent this same story to a few other people as well, just to see what their thoughts are on it. And they've basically come back and they've said that they haven't heard exactly the same thing, but they've said that they've heard that um, uh, Heiting out was very, very involved in the team selection and tactics yesterday. So they've said that. They've said, I've heard that. They've said, I've heard that Heitinger was heavily involved in the team setup yesterday. So they've heard that element of it. But obviously, they weren't aware of what, what came before and what um, what, was, what brought Moyes to that point. So look, that's it. I think that's very that's very good news if it's true. It's a good story. Um, off the back of a great win as well. It means that we can look forward to more lovely football. You know, what could be better than that? Um, drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it, even if you didn't, because it does really help us. And if you're new around it, please, please, please subscribe. Go and get yourself some tea and coffee from the Kenton Sussex Tea and Coffee Company as well. If you use the Claret 15 discount code, you get 15% off. All right, that's it from me. Come on, you irons. See you soon.